first time since 08. Game one features two-time All-Star Jordan Zimmerman and the leading candidate for the AL Cy Young, Felix Hernandez. Friday Night Baseball from beautiful Safeco Field. This is a series we've been looking forward to for a long time. The Nats in Seattle for three against the Mariners. Nationals up six over the Braves. NL East in the AL West. The Mariners are tied for the second wild card spot in the junior circuit. Bob and FP, he'll be along in a moment. Two really good pitching staffs getting together. And I think fans all around baseball have been looking forward to this weekend because overall the Nats are second. The Mariners first in ERA and some other departments. The starters are right there. The bullpens are right there. They can lock you down. They can knock you down for an entire ball game. So we'll see maybe which team is able to perform better offensively this weekend to actually get some runs on the board. Great pitching matchup tonight. Two of the best right-handers, Jordan Zimmerman and, of course, Felix Hernandez. I mean, is it not the best matchup in baseball tonight? I mean, late night Nats in the house. This is going to be a good one. Jordan Zimmerman, King Felix, Friday night, Seattle. Go back to Jordan's last start against the Giants. Really aggressive with the fastball. Pounding the strike zone, hitting the spots, elevating when he needed to for the strikeout pitch. But tonight, a little different story for Jordan. He's got to negotiate nine hitters in the Mariners lineup. No eight hitter to pitch around. No pitcher hitting. The DH in effect could be interesting. And then there's Felix Hernandez. 1.96 at home. 2.07 overall and at 196 that's the opponent's batting average as well yeah and you talk about what he's done this year he's given up more than three earned runs in one of his 27 starts this year so two fierce competitors going at it tonight we go over all the numbers you want but with these yeah. guys you get down to it both of these guys fierce competitors getting after it concentrate on every pitch they don't take one pitch off footnote on felix 16 consecutive starts earlier this year when he went at least seven and oftentimes eight innings in a start. Nobody does that at Major League Baseball anymore. That used to be done in the 60s and the 70s. So if you're hitting against this guy, what in the world do you do? Well, a lot like you see against Steven Strasburg. You don't want to get to those filthy out pitches that he has. So when you talk to people that face a Felix Hernandez a lot, they go up their first pitch hack and try to ambush him, get the first straight one. You see, get the first fastball and get the at-bat over with. You don't want to go deep into the count. Yeah, Rick Shu told me that the first at bat, very important, first time around the lineup. See a fastball anywhere near the zone, you better be hacking. When he gets to his secondary pitches, you're done. Clippard and Soriano for the Nats. And then, of course, for the Mariners, a bullpen that features an ERA of 2.37. Fernando Rodney is their closer. 38 times this year, he's pulled out the bow and arrow. Let's hope we don't have to see that this weekend.
B9. It seats 47,476. Retractable roof, beautiful night here. As you look to the west toward Puget Sound and the Olympic Mountains on the peninsula in the distance. So the Nats have had a hex over the Mariners, although they only meet once every three years. The memorable three-game sweep at home three years ago when Jim Riggleman resigned. And, of course, they won three here back in 08. The Nationals are 17-9 in August. The Mariners are right there with them. Second most homers in RBI among middle infielders over the last nearly three entire seasons. Ian Desmond for the Nats, who comes into this game seven for his last 17. Robinson Cano, FP, has made a big difference in this ball club. I've been told by Mariner coaches, the young guys really look up to him. He brings it, works hard every day. Yeah, he's really helped out Chris Taylor, a young shortstop, kind of brought him along. But when you talk about Robinson Cano and what he brings to the Mariners lineup, a guy that just doesn't try to do too much, he doesn't change his approach. If you're going to throw him away, he'll hit it away. You hang something, he'll shoot you out of the yard of the pole side. But he's reached base safely in 111 games. He has hits in 101 of the Mariners' 127 games. So the power number's down, but you figured that. You were not playing in Yankee Stadium anymore. It's a big ballpark, but you know, getting the job done for the Mariners all season long. Yeah, and by the way, batting 325, third highest in the American League. But we've got a pretty good guy at the top of the lineup as well, and that's Denard Span. 309 against right-handed pitchers. In fact, Cano with 158 hits. Span has 154. Two of the best hitmen in the game in Seattle this weekend. you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you and by Coons when you're talking cars you're talking Coons majestic Mount Rainier in the distance to the southeast the king is pitching tonight and his court is in the left field corner t-shirts K's you name it they do it for the king's court here in Seattle visit trainsearch.com find your local train comfort specialist dealer hard to stop a train Really hard, so it's 59% humidity, 69 degrees at game time. What an amazing night it is in Seattle. Let's see how good it gets with the Nationals offense sputtering a bit in Philadelphia and a tough assignment tonight. Worth will DH. Jason hitting 328 in the month of August. That opens up right field for Nate Shearholtz, who as a Nat is 0 for 3, but the Nats looking for good things from him. And maybe we get to see that arm on display in right field as well. Here he is, first game against the Nets. Felix Hernandez, career 123 and 90. A fastball average is 92. He'll sink it, he'll throw it four seam. Slider, curveball are the breaking pitches, and it's a true circle changeup that he throws at 89 to 91 miles an hour, a lot like Steven Strasburg's last start on the 22nd against the Red Sox, went five and two thirds, gave up three runs on five hits. Great atmosphere in the yard tonight. First pitch on time at 10 10 Eastern. The Darts man has faced Felix Hernandez 27 times. Two for 22 with five walks. An RBI. 
And that's in there, 91, up in the zone, counts even. Mariners at home, 35 and 34. The Nats a 500 ball club on the road. Yeah, last two starts for Hernandez. Five runs in 10 and two thirds innings. There's a breaking ball and Span flares it to left. That's Dustin Ackley, the left fielder, circling back to grab it. It's a big ballpark. It doesn't carry that great up here, and you got to have some outfielders who can cover some room here. Ackley Jackson Chavez, the outfield for the Mariners tonight. Taylor Seeger, left side, Cano Morrison, right side, and Mike Zanino behind the plate. Right now, their catcher, Mike Zanino, 19 home runs, 48 RBIs, one of the great rookie catcher home run performances ever for the Seattle Mariners. Here's Anthony Rendon. Fastball. Rendon rips it high in the air. Deep left center. Going back, Austin Jackson. And Rendon has left the yard in Seattle. 18th of the year. The Nats on top to one of the deepest parts of this ballpark. We said they wouldn't wait around. They're waiting for the first pitch fastball and get all over it. Anthony Rendon. In a ballpark not known for home runs, just takes the king deep for a 1 0 lead. And in the biggest way in a long time, there goes a no hitter. Tenth home run of the year given up by Felix Hernandez. Rendon's RBI total at 71. Next up, Jason Worth. I'll tell you what, our booth is very low here. That might be the first time I've heard the visiting dugout after a home run all year long. It got so quiet here at Safeco that you could actually hear the Nats in their dugout going nuts. Slight piece and worth locked up at 87. Let's check it out one more time. Anthony Rendon getting the Nats on the board. Elevated fastball. They said Hernandez was up his last start. That's why they pushed him back to Friday. Lloyd McClendon, who's not here tonight, said that was the reason they wanted to give him some rest. Worth will reach on 0 2 and bounce it to the shortstop, Chris Taylor, on the run. Two outs. Yeah, Lloyd McClendon not here. His daughter getting married this weekend in Chicago. When he took the Mariner job, he was a coach for the Tigers. They're in Chicago this weekend. So that's wow. how they scheduled all of that. And then and his then, daughter told him, I'm not moving the wedding, Dad. You're going to have to come. And then some guy that. We just can't stand is the skipper for the Mariners tonight and Nats fans know him very well Trent Jewett and of course I'm being sarcastic. He is one of the all time greats. We love him. He's a great baseball man and the bench coach of the M's will be running the ball club this weekend. And a strike to Adam LaRoche. That one moving outside. Had him against Felix Hernandez, 0 for 4 career. Worth just faced him for the first time, as did Rendon. And LaRoche will bounce one to the right side. They're going to let the second baseman Cano charge from the outfield. Shortstop thought about it, and Taylor let it go to Cano. Anthony Rendon goes, I mean, deep. The Nats on the board early.
one to remember. Mighty blast here in a big ballpark. The Mariners are third from the bottom in the American League in batting average. Only Boston and Houston lower. They're 11th in runs. But this guy may be one of the best kept secrets in baseball. Third baseman Kyle Seeger, 20 home runs, 81 RBIs, and the fifth best American League hitter in his own ballpark at 328. Oh, you know the arsenal for Jordan fastball average in 94 slider curveball the two breaking pitches change up very rarely throws it at 4% at 86 miles an hour. He's walked one or no batters in 40 of his 58 starts the last two years. So you'd think the Mariners game plan would be exactly what the Nats game plan is swing off and swing early. Austin Jackson over from the Tigers where he at 273 and 100 ball games. Trading deadline deal. They weren't real happy with James Jones, their center fielder. And by the way, he was recalled for the minor leagues today. So Jackson has the job, and he's hit 240 since coming here. 16 year veteran Doug Eddings has the plate. Crew chief, 27 years for Jim Joyce out at second base. That's up and in. It locks up Austin Jackson, and Jordan Zimmerman strikes him out. Well, that's a tempo you want to set. In Jordan Zimmerman's mind right now, that one run is all he needs. He's like, thank you very much. You got me one off the king, and I'm going to make that work. And that has to be your mindset after an early run in the first inning on the Rendon home run. So a three-pitch gets your glove to start this one up. Next up, Dustin Ackley, the left fielder. Twenty-six-year-old left-handed hitter. From Winston Salem, North Carolina. He played at UNC and was on the All College World Series tournament team three consecutive years. No player had ever done that. Hitting 256. He was a first rounder, second overall player taken in the draft by Seattle back in 09. And don't let that 256 fool you. He's hitting 313 since the All Star break. 46 for his last 147. Might be the hottest M's hitter. Zimmerman tied him up. Check swing. Goes foul. So the defense for the Nats tonight. Nate Sherholtz getting his first start as a Washington National in right field. For those of you that don't know a whole lot about Nate defensively, one of the more accurate, strong arms you'll see in the outfield. He covers a lot of ground out there. Above average runner. And above average defender. And Eckley lashes one out to center. Denard Span going way back. That hits the wall at the 401 mark. And Eckley digging for three. So a couple of guys with great swings in a big yard early in this game. And for Dustin Eckley, his fourth triple of the year. West ball game started fast and furious. Got done saying maybe the hottest hitter for the Mariners, and he shows you why. Location mistake from Jordan. He wanted that away, left it right down the middle, and Ackley just touches that for like about a 400 foot triple. Denard Span gave it a chase, felt the fence, pulled up, got a little bit too close, and that might have turned the double into the triple, but you can't fault Span. He thinks he can catch everything, and he usually does. Now bring in Robinson Cano. But early in the ball game with a one run lead and won't bring in the Nats infield. Anthony Rendon the closest to home plate in the baseline between second and third. And Jordan Zimmerman good job of getting a hard slider in on the left handed hitter. Hey Matt Williams is playing this right. But if you were ever tempted to bring your infield in. <laughs> in the bottom of the first inning yeah. against an opponent tonight would be the night I guarantee you he was thinking about it. That may be why he's pacing a little bit. Yeah. Well, they can always hope for a one hopper to Rendon or one back to the pitcher. Robinson Cano has 71 RBIs. As we mentioned, third in the American League in batting average at 325. And third in on base percentage, just under 400. Tenth year in the big leagues, first nine in New York. If you can perform consistently there, you can do it anywhere. He was a perennial 300 hitter in the Bronx. 
I mean, you, you don't have to pitch to him here if, if you don't want to. You know, Logan Morrison may be a double play on deck. You, you hate to put on base runners for free early in a game, but you definitely don't have to get it, give in to Cano right here. You can climb the ladder, see if he'll chase up. I know that's not really in Jordan's makeup, but. This one will be close over by the barrier, but a long way to go for Rendon. And it's just out of play. It's just so funny when you have such a good pitching matchup that you're thinking about strategy like this in the first inning. Yeah. And you have to. Based on. Felix Hernandez and what he's done. And just on numbers alone. Well, Cano pretty efficient in these situations. 23 out of 33 times. Now with two strikes, here comes the infield. I They're like it. In. I like it. You just don't want him to roll over on something with a half swing and score a run. And Cano will follow it straight back. I'd like to welcome the rest of our mass and audience who saw the Orioles beat Minnesota 9 1 at home tonight. We are in Seattle with the Nationals. Anthony Rendon has homered. And in the bottom of the first, Robinson Cano bats with a runner at third, one out. So one nothing Nats, and that's ball three low. The other element to Robinson Cano's game, contact. He has fanned 56 times this year in 486 official at bats. He'll take what the game gives him. He's not afraid to go the other way. He said as many as 33 home runs in his Yankee career. 12 this year, but the RBI total good at 71. I'm telling you, you don't have to throw a strike right here if you're Jordan Zimmerman. Jamming Cano, and no way to hit that ball fair. Perfectly placed heater, exactly where he wanted it. Off the plate in, ball four. You want to swing at it? Go ahead. Cano, by the way, has hit against Zimmerman in the past. Nats played the Yankees three years ago in D.C. He was one for two with a walk. Hitting 330 with runners in scoring position, Robinson Cano. A cat and mouse game going. Keep stepping out, trying to break up the rhythm of Jordan. Ball four. It's not a bad walk. Sets up a double play possibility with the longtime angel Kendry's Morales coming in. Morales is hit into seven double plays this year. He's with the Angels from 06 to 2012. He was here last year, hit 277, 80 RBIs. Started this season with Minnesota. You do have to pay attention to Cano. Ten stolen bases. He's been caught twice. With Seattle, Morales hitting just 211 in 29 games, but he's driven in 15 runs. Thirty one year old switch hitter career 274 batter and there's a check of Cano Mariners are ninth in the American League in stolen bases with 73. They kind of remind me of the Angels of years ago good pitching good defense and at times you wouldn't really know they're an American League ball club. What a good breaking ball that was. I'm trying to figure out if that was a change up or a slider that didn't do a whole lot. Might have been a change up at 90. Let's see. Still not sure. Either way, <laughs> he's out front. Might have just been a backup slider. Strikeout possibility here on 0 2. Zimmerman goes after him with a breaking ball. It's off the glove of LaRoche. Over to third is Cano after Ackley scored. And Jordan Zimmerman gave him one he could work with on a two strike count. Ties up the ball game here in the first.
Yeah, ball hit hard right here by Morales. I think he tried to go slider under his hands, maybe a curve ball. LaRoche with a half step and a dive. Ball too hot to handle. That scores Dustin Ackley, who tripled. And just like that, we're tied. Now the Mariners, another runner at third. And this is the third baseman we talked about earlier, Kyle Seeger. 26 years of age out of Charlotte. Another guy who went to North Carolina. And he may be the best third baseman in baseball that gets the least attention. Anybody who faces him, though, he has a, a big power zone and he's hit 20 home runs. 22 here last year. And 22 years ago in his first full season in the big leagues. Yeah, 50 extra base hits that leads the Mariners. And he went to the All Star game this year. So only four hitters in the league have higher batting averages at home. 89, low and in. There's Trent Jewett. Known for his arm almost falling off when he could send a runner from third base as the Nationals third base coach, but meant much more than that to this franchise. Me and Rich Donnelly told me that the two of them and Lloyd McClendon spent so much time together that Trent feels this weekend everything he thinks of will have already be thought about by Lloyd back in Chicago. Yeah. I mean they're really all on the same page. Yeah, very close. It's good staff. 3-1 pitch. That's a high riding fastball in there. Well, it gets the high strike at 96. But Jordan Zimmerman really having to rear back and go pedal to the metal here in the first inning. Got a call. Really hasn't had a chance to settle in this game and all of a sudden finds himself. You know, like he's pitching in the seventh for a win. He's having to go to his good stuff early. 3-2 with one out runner at first holding. And a ball that's out of here if it's fair. Just to the right of the pole. That close to being a four to one game. And there's some of the pop. From Kyle Seeger. That's a big ballpark where the ball doesn't carry. It didn't have the sound but I think this just gives you. An example of the kind of pop that Seeger has. You see the toe tap is a rhythm move and then he catches it just a hair out in front. Now you're hoping to get him on the ground for a double play. He's bounced into eight of them this year. Over to Rendon. Tough throw to second, and that will not retire anybody. That was Ian Desmond cutting across, trying to get that low throw. And the Mariners lead two to one. Well, they're probably going to score that E5, but nobody was at second. And I think they were playing Seeger so far to pull that Ian Desmond actually has the throw. But he doesn't get there in time. You can't pick a ball like that on the run. So Desmond on the fly can't get there. And I think it's because Rendon got rid of it so quick because he wanted the double play. That's not one where Rendon can set himself, pick up his target and throw it. He got rid of it. Desmond wasn't there. And they give him a base hit. Would have been an RBI either way. You can't assume the double play. Huh. So for Seeger, his 82nd RBI of the year, and a little home cooking doesn't hurt. Well, I mean, this is stuff that can't happen against this ball club, against this pitcher. Now it's Mike Zanino, the catcher. Good play by Rendon to glove that ball. Really wasn't that bad of a feed. And I really don't think anybody's fault because Ian Desmond had to scramble to get there. Cabrera was in the hole. Just one of those things. Four consecutive Mariners reaching base now. Three hits are around the walk to Cano. This guy's got some power. And he hits one out to center for Denard Span. Runners have to freeze. And a much needed one pitch second out. That'll bring in a familiar face to the Nats, and that's Logan Morrison, the former Marlin. He's faced Jordan Zimmerman 15 times with three hits, two of them home runs. Hitting 242 here. 
came over here in December of last year in a straight up trade for right handed pitcher Carter Caps. But I tell you what, I know it's late in the season. There's tons of data on these hitters. But the Nats are in some really pronounced shifts here early in this game against a team they haven't faced. And Cabrera way in right field, but Ian Desmond staying almost straight up at shortstop. And you just saw the shift they were in where Cabrera couldn't even get to second base on a double play. We talked about in Philadelphia when you're in your division late, how much data you have because you played him so many times. Yeah. Off the end of the bat out of play 0 2. You know, I always liked. The data to be against your pitchers. Yeah. So, you know, Logan Morrison may be, you know, a hooker on the ground where he hits everything to the right side, but he's, you know, doesn't have a lot of track record against Jordan. Faced him when he was a Marlin, but you know what I'm saying? The, yeah. the Mariners guys have not really had that much record against Jordan, so now you're going to pronounce shifts against pitchers who might have different stuff. Exactly. Don't throw the same kind of fastball. Yeah, it's a great point. That's why when it's in your division, you played him 16 times. You're like, all right, yeah, I know where this guy, like I always say, eats lunch. Way inside, and the count's even 2 2. And Jordan Zimmerman is up to 32 pitches in the first inning. Felix Hernandez faced four batters in the top of the inning and threw 10 pitches, eight for strikes. One of them went a long way. Up! Stairs with a fastball for strikeout number two. So Seattle gets a couple. Yeah, I'm surprised too. We didn't expect 2 1 after one inning with both of these guys throwing. Honda with our top of the second do ups here and what they've done in their interleague careers. So Ian Desmond, not the highest average, but plenty of damage. Bryce Harper, kind of the opposite, but the RBIs look good. And then Wilson Ramos at 232. And by the way, speaking of interleague, this year the American League has won 147 games, the National League 126. And Seattle's division, the only one in the American League with a losing record against the Nationals. The National League, that is 42 and 46. 
Both of these clubs have won eight and lost nine in interleague play this year. Ian Desmond seven for his last 17. Well, he saw Hernandez after the first pitch homer go off speed to Worth, off speed to LaRoche, and first pitch off speed to Ian Desmond. When you talk to people that watch Felix pitch every fifth day. They say he does that. You get his fastball, he's going to go somewhere else. Great stop, Chris Taylor. No chance. Chris Taylor, by the way, a former Virginia Cavalier who was born in Virginia Beach. A fine play on his fellow shortstop. And Ian Desmond's aboard with the Nats second base hit. Ian saw that ticketed for the middle and he started to bow out in banana out and he saw Taylor die for this and catch it had to write his path and run through the base. Pretty nice stop by Chris Taylor. Ian Desmond will take the knock. Rice Harper's first career at bat. In the great Northwest and he was booed. <laughs> What's he ever done to Seattle. 89 under his hand. Change up. We've got a couple of grips on the change up. One that'll go straight down, one that tails away from a left handed. But he gets it in there and gets that grip and just throws it as hard as he can. There it is. And Another Rice one. able to ID that one well. Harper coming off a rough series. He was 0 for 9 against the Phillies. That was too bad because coming out of the homestand, hit that homer against the Giants last Sunday. We thought he was really on his way. And then Philadelphia pitched him very well. That's an easy take, a breaking ball that stayed way outside. He hasn't, I don't think he's thrown a fastball since the home run. <laughs> By the way, in a major upset here in Seattle, five hitters, all contact so far. They haven't been able to raise any K's in the left field corner yet. And Bryce trying to do something with Desmond aboard here. He'll line it up the middle. Hits near the bag and into center field. So the Nationals, three out of six against Felix Hernandez already. Still hasn't thrown a fastball. They're talking to Mariners people before the game. They said if you touch his heater, he'll go to the off speed. So a lot of off speed to Worth and LaRoche. Desmond hit an off speed pitch up the middle. Bryce Harper got nothing but curveballs and change ups. He lines the change up right back up the middle. So first and second, nobody out. Here's Wilson Ramos. He lines one. Runners not able to stay home. Harper doubled off first. Bryce looked at Matt Williams and said replay. He thought he was safe. So here comes Matt. Well, Desmond. He's going to visit with Corey Blazer here. Desmond got back easily. And then Seeker looked across and saw he had a chance for Harper. I thought from where we're sitting, he got back in time. Randy Noor on the top step, and they're going to look at it. And that's one worth looking at. Let's look at it together once again. Good play by Kyle Seeger at third. Checks Desmond, goes to first. Oh, Bryce Ooh, is in there easily. He's back. Right? It's not even close. This should not take long. Got the boom box in the middle. They got their headsets on and they're going to talk to New York. It might take a while. Carp, we're, we're in Seattle. We're yeah. Talking to New York. That's a long way. That's a long way. They used to have to lay cable to make a phone call like that. Took a while. But I've already written down five with a line underneath it. I'll be shocked if this is a double play. I want to do this someday. Just let. Uh. This is not taking long. That sets her off. Bryce Harper yeah. safe at first base. Man, close. So Matt Williams has another one to use tonight. I think that's a good example of an umpire getting caught up in a crowd. As the throw went across, this crowd went nuts. And I think maybe Corey Blazer got caught up in the moment. And he's going to go tell Bryce Harper, my bad. <laughs> Corey Blazer, third year in the big leagues as a full time umpire. About the same time as Bryce, really. In terms of big league experience and 
That'll bring in a guy who knows this ballpark as Drupal Cabrera. I don't know if people think about that often, but the part of the the disadvantage of playing on the road is sometimes umpires can get caught up in the moment just like you know players can. And Cabrera who's three for 20 career against Hernandez but has a couple of RBI's first pitch swinging. Twenty one for eighty one in twenty three games is an ad and from the left side hitting three oh four. See that swing that means there's some late movement to that pitch right out to the end of his bat. So the court stands up and shakes the K signs they have the Kings court they have the high court because they had to make more seats. Because it was so popular, general admission tickets, you get a t shirt and that sign when you come in. There's the high court on the upper deck. I thought Washington had the highest court in the land. Yes, this is what they do with two strikes to every hitter. 0 oh, 2. And they all sit down. We take a break and they'll be up here in a second again. I think it's a wonderful idea, whoever came up with it. <laughs> Oh, somebody! I see a backward K. Somebody's waiting for a called third strike. They're chanting K. Can you hear it? And a one-two, Cabrera. That ball right through the wickets on the runner, and the Mariners turn it into a six-four-three double play. They're hitting them hard, getting good swings. Ian Desmond had to get out of the way of that. Good concentration by Chris Taylor to get it started. Bainbridge Island sitting with all his friends. National season plan holders, you might have postseason tickets in your future until September 5th. To purchase them, you will also be able to upgrade your season plan for next year to receive upgraded postseason seats for all renewal and postseason ticket details. Visit nationals.com slash renew. Nationals got into their hotel about 4 a.m. Pacific time yesterday morning. Enjoyed a day off here. And here we are on Friday night, the second day after that crazy travel night. And it's the Mariners, 2 to 1, as they have Chris Taylor, Andy Chavez, and Austin Jackson. Bottom of the second, and a strike to the former Cavalier, Chris Taylor, from Virginia Beach. Seattle drafted him out of UVA in the fifth round just two years ago. So he's been on the fast track to the big leagues at 328 at Tacoma this year. Hey, Carb, you know how we always complain when replay takes too long? That one took 54 seconds, so you have to give him props for nice getting that one done quick. It was indisputable, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. By the way, the Mariners have one of the most unique setups in baseball between their 
Triple A ball club and the big league club Tacoma about 40 miles south of here. On Interstate 5 they can call a guy at 3 in the afternoon and have him at the ballpark. They called up James Jones today. That ball really jamming. Chris Taylor. Adam LaRoche under it. It's out the bottom of the second gets underway. Number nine hitter next. That's a good thing. If you're in AAA and you're doing well, it's a bad thing if you're in Seattle and you're struggling. You can be back in a hurry. <laughs> it's time to tweet your photo using hashtag Mass and Fan Photos for a chance to have it shown in a future broadcast. That's brought to you by AT&T and I see red people all over the place. Here at Safeco tonight. Here's James Jones who was playing a lot of out, outfield center field here. And it's one of the reasons he struggled. That's one of the reasons they went out and got Austin Jackson from the Tigers. Here's former Nat Indy Chavez who had nine at bats for Washington with an RBI back in 05. They're talking to signed with the Mets. Talking to Steve McCaddy today about it just, just pitching in general. We had an awesome discussion on the bench before batting practice today and how you know the concentration level it takes at that major league level every single pitch for 115 pitches every fifth day and what that takes it out out of you from a mental standpoint we always talk about always oh, getting to 115 pitches he's tired but you know the mental fatigue and having to concentrate and knowing every single pitch this is what I want this is who's on deck this is who's in the hole you know where's my defense playing behind me right now you know we're playing in the pull How's this guy swing looking? He, he said the amount of information that you go through as a pitcher mentally on every single pitch. When he used to come out of the game as a pitcher, he would just sit down and he said it was a great feeling when he had a good outing just to come out of the game, sit on the bench and go and yeah. take that deep breath. And I don't think that's talked about enough of how much mental energy it takes to have a good outing as a pitcher. I, I know I didn't realize it because as a hitter, you go up there and you, you concentrate for about what 15, 20 pitches a night maybe. And then on defense, you know, it's a different kind of concentration. We're anticipating the baseball, but really good stuff from Steve McCaddy today. Breaking ball way down and into Chavez, who has to scramble out of the way. And how if all of a sudden, Carp, you just take one pitch off and you just say, ah, you know, I'm not going to really think this one through, and you throw it down the middle, that's the one that goes in the gap mm -hmm. or over the fence. Maybe Chavez has been in the big leagues. For the better part of 15 years broke in with the Royals back in 01. Organization guy, he was with the Expos for three years. And a swing and a miss as Zimmerman gets him low in the zone. Jordan has five outs, three of them on strikes, and Mercedes Benz will track it. We have a Zimmerman fastball to Andy Chavez. Not for you. It's right down the middle and challenged him. A little bit tardy. Top of the order now, Austin Jackson. Ah! He hasn't really hit that well for the Mariners yet. 25 ball games sitting under 240. And I talked to former big league center fielder Andy Van Slyke, who's the Mariners assistant. Hitting coach, and he really likes watching this guy play center field. Good jumps, not the greatest arm, but very accurate. Well, he now, we understand that was a bit of a loss in the Tigers' clubhouse, ZP, when this guy left. Yeah, there were not there were some Tigers not real happy about it. I, I'm at same sort of notes. My father's a huge Detroit Tigers fan still, and he said there's still people talking about the Doug Fister trade <laughs> even at this time of year in Detroit. Yeah. Tigers a game and a half back of the upstart Royals. Yeah, not too happy about that trade, and it's almost September, and you can see why, right? Yeah. From both sides. Two balls, two strikes. Target in. Zimmerman gets in there, but Jackson able to foul it away. Fastball upstairs, 94. Zimmerman, first inning, by the way, 33 pitches, 23 strikes. A 1 2 3 would be great for him here. Pitchers don't have to worry about picking up the bats this weekend. And a 3 2 now. 
Got him. Took a little bit off. 88. And Austin Jackson strikes out against Zimmerman for the second time tonight. It'll be Sheerholt starting for the first time as a net. He's next. King's Court, where everybody's got on their yellow, cheering on King Felix. And coming into today, only a few Nationals had ever faced Felix Hernandez, and the results hadn't been too pretty. The Nationals, as a team, were hitting 127 against the right-hander, but only two guys in the Nationals lineup had more than four at-bats against Hernandez in their career. Denard Spann's one of them. He's just two for 22 off Hernandez. Reflecting on those at-bats earlier today, Spann said that he noticed when Hernandez gets into a jam, he turns into a different guy on the mound. Spann said Hernandez can be the best pitcher in the game even when he's in cruise mode, but when he turns that switch on, he's almost unhittable. That said, Span was joking that he didn't want to put Hernandez on too much of a pedestal before the game. He said he wouldn't call the righty King Felix prior to game time, but told reporters to check back with him afterwards. And guys, here's a fun little note. A team staffer mentioned earlier today that bullpen coach Matt LeCroy went two for six with two RBIs against King Felix in his career, a stat that had LeCroy strutting up and down the Nats dugout this afternoon. <laughs> stat of the weekend. Thank you, Dan. It was nice to see Dan's pass list behind him yeah. during that report. Having a good time. Yeah. 2 0 to Nate Sheerholtz. And he gets under one to center. Pretty well hit. Drifting and drifting. Austin Jackson. Shall we say the ball's carrying in Seattle tonight? Well, we could definitely say they're squaring up Felix Hernandez. That is, let me check. One, two, three, four, five. The sixth hard hit ball out of nine hitters off King Felix tonight. And Nate Sherholtz just missed his first home run as a Nat. He's 0 for 3 as a Nat, and he's hit all three balls right on the barrel. Pretty good swing. Top of the order, here's Denard Spann. Spann fly ball to Dustin Ackley and left first time up. So three for nine, first time through. Inside the numbers with Jeep on Denard Span. In the National League, no lower than seventh in any of those key categories. Head in fishing. Yeah, you know, a lot has been said about these next six games for the Nats being a measuring point, and I couldn't disagree more. It's been said in the media, it's been said around the ballpark. I think it's a measuring point for the other teams, and I think that's the way you have to think. You're you're the team that's in first place. And when you start talking about it, it's a great measuring stick for the Nats to see where they're at. No, it isn't. 
it's a great measuring stick for the teams playing the Nats and that's the way Matt Williams thinks. I think the other way is kind of a loser's mentality. They got to come up to your level. You're the team with one of the best records in baseball and in first place. It's a measuring stick for them. Mm -hmm. 2 2. And Span right back up the middle, but not hit hard enough to get by Phoenix. Two down. And I, I'd like to add on to that. We'll get to that in a moment after we look at what Anthony Rendon did first time up. Well, he was the better man in this battle. Put the Nats on the board, one to nothing, breaking up the no hitter, breaking up the shutout. And it was a first pitch wow. fastball that came in at. 91 and left at 102 and I see if he gets a first pitch fastball right here or he sits on something soft. It was Anthony Rendon's 56th extra base hit of the year. So he's going to hit 20 plus in his second full year in the big leagues. And really the first year that he's gotten every day at bats. Because last year he kind of worked his way in it was so good they had to keep him in. Breaking ball, a strike. I can understand though, FP, and I'm not disagreeing with you at all. I think you bring up a great point. But I can understand why people would say that because against teams with 500 records are better than Nats are only 23 and 30. And I think, I think along with what they're saying is maybe the wish to see the Nationals win against the better ball clubs, yeah. which this year they, you know, at times they've done it, but at times they haven't. That's a good point. Very good point. But I'm just talking about more of a mindset. And when you have that mindset collectively as a ball club, as 25 guys in the same clubhouse, that's when you start to have that swagger that, hey, come up to my level. Rendon takes it low, two and two. You're competing with me, not the other way around. Rendon, by the way, not to be overlooked, scored his 96th run when he drove himself in. So four more to the century mark. Low and away, one skipping in the dirt, backhanded by Mike Zanino. He just looks terrified in his second career at bat in this ballpark. Against the best right-handed pitcher in the game. Well, right? And that's the guy, the guy you can build a franchise around when you start taking great hacks and having great at bats off some of the best in baseball. Did he go? He didn't. And Rendon's aboard for the second time. So they came close to those K's, but the Nats haven't gone down swinging yet. Yeah, 204 strikeouts and now 35 walks for Felix Hernandez and Anthony Rendon, as good as anybody at holding up on his swing and another quality at bat. Yeah. 46 walk of the year. Here's worth the DH and Felix Hernandez got ahead of him first time and then had him reaching for the breaking ball which he rolled over to the shortstop. Twilight time here in Seattle now. 759 local. That one fades to the inside corner at 93. Yeah, that was a fastball, but it had some wicked movement to it. Pretty quick to the plate. Wouldn't be the worst time in the world for Rendon to try to get stolen base number 14. Nino, by the way, 27% caught stealing. And Worth hits one well out to deep left center. Jackson watching this one, and the Nats have homered again. Almost the identical place where Rendon hit his. And it's 3 2 Washington. Two out walk and a blast by Worth, his 14th. He caught the off speed pitch out in front. And so the Nats have homered twice off the King and they've sat down this whole ballpark a couple of times and you could hear a pin drop. Well you told told us about how he'd gone all year long pretty much without giving up three runs. Well he's given up more than three earned runs in one start out of 27 it was against. Tampa Bay where he went six and two thirds gave up four runs actually got the win in that game May 12th right. 
So the Nets have three on the board already. Adam LaRoche bounced out to Robinson Cano, who's playing more of a pole position against LaRoche than any second baseman in right field we've ever seen. The Nats have not struggled against the elite pitchers of baseball this year. Remember Johnny Cueto came into Nats Park with all those crazy numbers. They knocked him around. They've done a nice job against number one starters for the most part all year. And the same holds true. Three runs in three innings and counting off King Felix. And LaRoche. This one will be to the shortstop. So that's it for the Nats. But the long ball comes up big. Rendon a great walk with two outs. Jason Wern, RBI total jumps up to 73, and he's in the top 10 in the National League in RBIs with that swing. Jason Worth giving him the lead again. Little slider here that didn't do a whole lot. Watch the extension by Worth. Catches it out in front. And watch the dugout in the background right here. They're just sitting there, right? Big ballpark. They're not sure. You see Doug Fister standing up there at the end. It had a lot of carry to it. You're wondering, is this going to get out of here? And I know what the Mariners broadcast team is saying right now. Well, it's not so much the home run to Worth. It's the walk to Anthony Rendon in front of him. Yep. And that's true. And I have to admit, as a play by play guy, I was treating that one with caution as well. It's such a big park. You come in here, and like outfielders in batting practice, we kind of try to watch a little BP and see how balls are flying here. But until you see it under game conditions, you're just not sure it's going out. Unless somebody really pulls one down the line. That's up in the air off the bat of Ackley. Rendon over there. The ball came back into the lights as if almost reappearing from nowhere, and he makes the catch. Contemporary Christian musician Lincoln Brewster will be at the ballpark next Saturday, September 6. Nats Phillies 405, and the post-game event features testimonies from national players, including Adam LaRoche and others. Special group pricing available. For game tickets and more. Visit nationals.com/faith. Call 202-675-NATS. Adam told me today they're expecting a great crowd to stay after the game, so get your tickets for a week from tomorrow. Here's Robinson Cano. I'll be pitching to him this time. Jordan worked him carefully with a runner at third, one out, first inning, and walked him. Robinson Cano this year, 56 strikeouts, 51 walks, and he serves a base hit his 159th to left field. And I mean, he got the sweet spot on that ball. It got by so fast, Rendon didn't even move. Trucks tell me it's the first time that Felix Hernandez has given up two home runs in a game this year. He's given up home runs in four straight starts. He had gone about six out of eight starts before that without giving one up. 
You know, he's faltered in September the last couple of seasons. That's why the Mariners pushed him back. Another reason why is it lines him up for a one game playoff based on him being pushed back to tonight's start. Mm. It's kind of interesting. We talked about this in Philly. This uh, pushback thing hasn't worked out well for them. They were beaten by the Rangers here Wednesday when Texas put 12 on the board. Cano running and a perfectly placed hit by Kendry's Morales will give the Mariners first and third with one out. So each time the Nats have taken the lead, Seattle has come back with an answer. I'm trying to decide if Trent Jewett played hit and run baseball or run and hit. The difference meaning Cano was stealing and Morales just swung at the pitch or was it a hit and run where the hitter has to swing no matter what. Bottom line is it's first and third one out for the Mariners and. This one has been. Like playoff baseball from the first pitch. Yeah, except tonight the hitters. Are the ones having their ways. And here's Seager. He had that ball to Anthony Rendon in a situation just like this. He wants that pitch back. He got a fastball right down the middle and was taken all the way. Yeah. A couple of syllables muttering to himself right there. What a family the Seegers. He has two brothers who've been drafted. Justin by the Mariners in the 12th round last year. And another brother, Corey, in the first round by the Dodgers back in 2012. This guy drafted in 09, his kid brothers trying to make their way to the major leagues. 1 1 from Zimmerman. Keeping the ball down, Good looking pitch. for a double play grounder. All well, his numbers break them down into different categories. Very impressive. Last two years as well, 67 doubles combined. This year he has 26 well on his way to 34 or 35 again. Ninety five low. Counts even two two. Jordan Zimmerman 51 pitches in the first two innings and that includes a one two three second. Adam reaching and he just stayed alive. Nats rotation averages 22 seconds between pitches. There's only four teams that are quicker. And you're seeing in the second half of the season, especially lately, hitters trying to break up that rhythm. Guys stepping out on Doug Fister, guys stepping out tonight on Jordan Zimmerman. That's a designated hitter that just hit a tater. 2 2, perfect pitch outside corner. Kyle Seeger gone, and he doesn't like the call from Doug Eddings. Jordan Zimmerman, great time for strikeout number five. Nissan will track it. Well, he hit the target. I don't know if it's in pitch track or not, but he darted Wilson Ramos's glove, didn't have to move it, and Seeger didn't like the call. Big strikeout right there with runner on third one out from Jordan Zimmerman. Brings in the power hitting catcher, Mike Zanino, who set a Seattle club record this year. For any catcher that's ever played here with 13 home runs before the All Star break. Great breaking ball. Nowhere near making contact with that. Hasn't really had the feel for a slider yet tonight, but that was a good one. It's been backing up. It's been more like a changeup. The pitch to Austin Jackson goes with another one to strike him out to end the second did nothing but now he's got a little more out in front got his fingers on top of the baseball and he's getting some break so back to back sliders that look just like fastballs. So this will be interesting do you throw him the fastball to back him off for another slider or do you go three in a row here. I, I think it's you got to bounce one maybe. That's what he tried to do 87. But that was a good question you could do either one. Got to make sure you got to get that fastball 
Well off the plate inside. Rookie catcher, power hitter, but he strikes out a lot. And he does again. As Zanino's 133rd strikeout this year. Two hits, Jordan helps the Nats keep their 3 2 lead. Most important connection is three to two Nationals on a couple of home runs. Anthony Rendon got the party started in the first inning when he came undone on this Felix Hernandez fastball. That made it one to nothing, broke up the no hitter, broke up the shutout. Then Jason Worth went straight animal on this one. A two run bomb after a two out walk to Anthony Rendon to make it three to two, and that's where we're at, and they love it. I see red people. He looks like he could play. Get him a uni. Yeah. Wait, he's got a uni. Get him on the field. 34. Top of the fourth, Ian Desmond. That guy who wears 34, and then Wilson Ramos. Ball running to the inside corner on Ian. Solid hit up the middle. Chris Taylor cut it off, couldn't make a play, and Desmond. Now eight for his last 18. Now we're going to start rattling those K's. They've waited over an hour here. And the Nets haven't given them a strikeout yet. It's going to be a battle here for Ian Desmond. Well, the Braves won tonight. They beat Miami. Mets ended the Phillies four game winning streak. So the rest of the division all finals tonight. Nats will have to win to stay six up on Atlanta. Desmond out of play right side battling on 0 2. It's Thursday night football on WUSA 9 in two weeks. The Ravens host the Pittsburgh Steelers. Football starts here. Thursday night football only on WUSA 9. One ball, two strikes. I mean, the best part about watching the Kings court down there is when it goes to another pitch and they'll go, oh, and they sit down. <laughs> Evidently, the King has a chef. <laughs> that guy in the middle is having fun, and I'm going to find him after the game, and we're going to have fun together. 2 That's 2. Like, Desmond stays alive, and they really exhale this time. <sighs> Now 
Meanwhile, this is piling up the pitch count on the King. 41 pitches, 26 strikes through three. Not a bad pitch count for three innings, but Desmond quite a battle here. It was 0-2 a while ago. Good fight. Good fight going on between these two. I love it. Nasty changeup right there, fouled off by Desmond. The only two Nats in the lineup tonight. Three actually, counting LaRoche, had hit against Hernandez, Span, and Cabrera, the others. Look at that. Look at that ladder from bottom to top. It's number nine coming. Desmond serving it, and he missed by a couple of feet. I think this shows you that against a great pitcher, Ian Desmond is simplifying things until he can get something to work with. You take big hacks against this guy, you're probably sitting down three or four pitches ago. Well, they've gotten there's a thousand people dressed in yellow as motivation to put it in play. And Desmond will put it in play. Rams one to left. It is gone. Right to the left of the 376 mark. And the Nationals have hit three home runs against Felix Hernandez. That's the best at bat of the year. Mark that down. So watch in the right corner. They're ready to punch Ian Desmond out. Oh. And probably a double because uh, it went out of here. For home run number 22 and RBI number 81. And I'm marking that down as the best at bat of the year. Great job of fouling off some nasty pitches to get to that one and shoot it out of the yard. And even Trent Jewett, maybe a little bit, could admire that one in the Mariners' dugout because that was the at bat of the year. All right, Ian Desmond is on fire. Nine for 19 with two home runs, four RBIs over four and a half ball games. Bryce Harper base it up the middle his first time. So only the second time all year he's given up more than three runs. May 12th here against Tampa Bay, he gave up four to 12 to 5 win. Harper takes the off speed, ball two. 10 pitch gem. Boy, he, he's the best pitcher in the American League, and Ian Desmond just fouled off pitch after pitch after pitch. Finally got one he could handle and shot it out of here for a 4 2 lead. Yeah, the count was 0 2. Not when he hit the homer, but he worked it up to a good count. And Robinson Cano takes care of that. Ramos and Cabrera. That was a big boy at bat. So this is the first time since June, two years ago, that Felix Hernandez has given up three home runs in a game. He's never given up four, so keep that in mind. With a long way to go. Ramos hit the ball hard first time. He was unlucky. Two on, nobody out. Hit a line drive right at Kyle Seeger at third. And he hasn't given up four runs, like you said, Carp, since May 12th. And Ramos goes deep to left center. This ball is gone. Unbelievable power display by the Nationals. Are you kidding me? <laughs> the ballpark is stunned. Pitching coach Rick waits to the mound, who probably hasn't been out there much during Felix's starts this year. And the Nationals have hit 120 home runs on the year, four of them in four innings tonight. Who thought there was going to be four jump shots in the Nats dugout tonight off of King Felix? Raise your hand. Eighth home run of the season from the Buffalo in this park. Sounds like we're at a golf tournament. Not happy. Didn't see it coming. You know, six of the first nine hitters for the Nats hit it right on the screws. There was nothing to show. They were having good at bats, and they finally cashed in. This guy's been in the big league since 05. Not happy. And the Nats are doing something that's never been done to him before. 
Here's his Drupal Cabrera. And at least for a moment, the court has adjourned. Not happy. And I'm sorry, no appeals. And Cabrera off to the left side, 0 2. Rendon, Worth, Desmond, and Ramos tonight. Now they want to strike out here, even though they're down by three. And Cabrera will put it in play. It's a foul ball left side. Kyle Seeger. Two outs. That will get it down to the number nine man Nate Sheerholtz who hit the ball a ton. Hit a fly ball to deep center and they've got Felix shaking his head. He's seven and oh with a one seven seven ERA. With an extra day's rest 13 starts of five or more days rest. Those are his numbers not the case here tonight against the Nationals. Sure Holtz 0 for 4 is in that getting his first start tonight after three pinch hitting appearances. He gets a breaking ball and bounces it right side for Robinson Cano. Impressive inning by the Nationals. Desmond leads off goes 0 2 battles through 10 pitches. Hits one out of here. One out later. Wilson Ramos early count ambush. Watch these two swings and enjoy from the great Northwest tonight. For me and Desmond Wilson Ramos, it's a tater fest here at Safeco Field. Who would have thought that? Remember, our Washington, D.C. Laxus dealers are donating $250 to the Children's National Medical Center for every home run a Nats player hits this season. So keep them coming. Yeah, why not? Lexus, the pursuit of perfection. Four home runs in four innings. So the Nats went to Philadelphia, a band box. Couldn't get much offense going. You come out here against one of the pitchers in baseball who can shut you down. It's just amazing how hard this game is to figure out from day to day. Right. Unbelievable. He got it started. Bottom three for the Mariners here. Logan Morrison in the bottom of the fourth. Struck out swinging first time. Well, the great thing about Zimmerman is you know he's going to stay aggressive here. Six strikeouts among his first nine outs tonight. That was a big last inning when he quelled that rally. They had to 
Tying run at third base with one out. He struck out Seeger and Zanino. And now all the momentum's wearing a gray uniform. Doug Eddings is loving the outside corner to left handers right now and whatever he's seeing from the Jordan Zimmerman delivery and that fastball away. He is getting a couple of inches out there. And he'll take it. And he gives Logan Morrison timeout. Just as Jordan went into his. Delivery. One two pitch swing and a miss upstairs. Seven strikeouts. Three in a row and Mercedes will track it. Well, I can just see Nats fans on a Friday night with the late night Nats. They got their K signs out and they're shaking them all over and they're red unis. Seven Ks and counting for Jordan Zerman. Chris Taylor popped up to LaRoche first time. Of Cox High School in Virginia in 09. He was the Virginia AAA State Player of the Year. And was considered one of the top collegiate shortstops in the country at UVA in 2011 and 12. Well, I love him here. Mariners coach is raving about how tough he is. Hard nosed kid. Plays the game the right way. Tough out of the plate. Does everything right. All the little things. Trent Jewett going on and on about his shortstop today. And Rich Donnelly, same thing. We love him. Back to Zimmerman. Good fielding position. Two outs. All right, fans, you get a ticket, a drink deal starting for just $22 on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday games at Nats Park. You can also enjoy Miller Lite Party Night. Happy hour featuring live music and a six dollar drink special at the on deck bar before the game. Some restrictions apply. Get your tickets online at nationals.com slash party. They'll be there. They like to party. Two outs, Andy Chavez the hitter. And Jordan struck him out swinging first time up. And he's a good contact man. Commanding the breaking ball right now. And a one handed swing had him reaching. Well, you see the swings on the fastballs for the Mariners hitters are a little different now that Jordan has established the slider. And it's starting to break. The first two innings, he really did have a feel for it, kind of spinning up there. And as a hitter, you see that, you just take it. But now there's something in the back of their heads, a little off speed, and they're having trouble getting the heater. And a fly ball to left for great. Bryce Harper. Jordan Zimmerman getting great run support tonight and now doing something serious with it, giving up only two singles since the first inning.
started it with the tater. Then Jason Worth said, Felix Hernandez, you got nothing, man. And then Ian Desmond with a little even flow to left center field. And then Wilson Ramos comes undone. So four home runs for the Nationals tonight against Felix Hernandez. Don't tell the Washington State Highway Patrol about these four guys. Jeep with serious hit speeds on the home runs. Wow. Upstairs, Denard Span takes a high strike. He's 0 for 2. Fly ball to left, bouncer back to the pitcher. And a breaking ball is low. Span finally gets a base hit. Third career hit against Felix Hernandez. I love that you just said finally gets a base hit because that means you're used to Denard having about two by now. He was in a slump FP 0 for 2. Well, Nats tried to put this one in the rear view mirror and Denard Span starts off the fifth with a base hit and trying to add on. He was 0 for 8 in the Philly series before going single double home run on Wednesday night. Going to move out to a good lead here. He's stolen 27 and 32 attempts. Rendon has been dangerous twice. So Felix has a lot to be concerned about here. Span runs on the first pitch and Rendon fouls it. Good pitch to run on, too. It was a breaking ball. But don't you like the way they're pressing the issue here up by three? Middle of the game. I love it. And I'm trying to figure out if that was a hit and run or a straight steal. But based on the fact that Rendon chased something down in the dirt, I think Matt Williams is yeah. really forcing the issue, pressing the envelope and trying to add on. I like it. He talked about execution and how they need to execute better in these big games. And it's not about getting caught up in the moment, it's just about doing your things and doing them right. And with Span holding, swing and a miss. That was by far the best pitch of the night from Felix Hernandez. That's the action that we've seen before with his changeup. Watch this. That's just dirty. And Rendon oh. takes it over but low. One and two. Nobody's gotten out of control with two strikes tonight. Great approaches. That's a good point, Carl. We've seen Ian Desmond swing so hard with two strikes all year. His last at bat, he spread out. He took a lot out of his swing, just flicking the ball foul, staying alive. And a strong young man who doesn't have to swing from the heels of his spikes to hit one out. He showed that. Nice easy swing, too, on the home run. I like it. Span diving back in close. Believe it or not, and I hope somebody asks Ian after the game and all the players, having all those people up there with the K signs is tremendous motivation not to strike out. Low throw and Logan Morrison kept that ball from going down the warning track on the right field foul side. He almost put Denard Span on third base with nobody out. And yeah, nice job of stopping that by Logan Morrison. Quick move by Hernandez. Quick feet. And a big breaking ball, base hit. Oh. Rendon reaching out, and he's on base for the third time. This is really impressive what the Nats are doing tonight. It is, Carb. You just touched on it, and it's maybe the best point all night is the approach with two strikes and a guy that's known for striking people out. We've obviously chronicled that tonight, and just at bat after at bat with two strikes, putting the ball in play. They are stirring in the Seattle bullpen. 
I don't want to speculate, but Felix Hernandez doesn't look right to me. His stuff isn't sharp. His shortest two outings of the year, at least two of the three shortest, have been his last two starts. Five at Detroit in a 13 to 4 loss when he threw 92 pitches, five and two thirds at Fenway when he threw 116. So here's Worth, one for two with a two run homer as the DH tonight. And a chance to bust this thing wide open in the fifth inning. Front door breaking ball misses. Right hander Brandon Maurer. What a great bullpen Trent Jewett's ball club has had this year. Doesn't matter who you bring in, they've all got the job done. Part of it on the left side, former Nat Joe Bimel. And a good take by Worth and a pitch away, two and one. There's <laughs> Joe Bimel, one of the great characters we've ever had on this ball club. And Worth, right center, span back to tag. Andy Chavez, just not deep enough for Denard, a one hopper to the shortstop. And a big first stop for the Mariners. Keeping runners from advancing. Next up, LaRoche. Great idea by Jason Worth, just not deep enough. He was trying to move Span the whole at bat. For the achiever in you, PNC Bank, with our minor league report, we check in on Manny Burris, native of the district. And at the age of 29, playing some of the best AAA ball of his career. We'll see if it's enough to open up some eyes in D.C. That's a guy. You could use in September as a pinch runner. Two one. As far as the pitch got a moment ago to Worth, and in fact Felix Hernandez turned around and looked at the scoreboard like I did, said two to one before he threw his first pitch. The yeah, Syracuse Magic numbers one. They're looking to clinch tonight. Good for the Chiefs. LaRoche, couple of ground balls to the right side. This time they have to leave the third baseman and the shortstop at home. And Adam didn't like that call. It's 1 1. Well, that's been there all night. It's been there for Jordan Zimmerman. It's there for Felix Hernandez now. Wow. Doug Eddings is like the outside corner lefties. He's consistent. He's been consistent. Eight Washington hits already. And I'm trying to bust out of an 0 for 12. LaRoche career 0 for 6 against Felix Hernandez with three strikeouts, but not whiffing tonight to this point. And they finally get one to celebrate in the left field corner. Adam thought it was low. I think he thought it was outside too. There's a Volkswagen moment in history. Weekend here six years ago. Dimitri, Ronnie Belliard, Jesus Flores. They just really racked R.A. Dickey here. Tyler Clippard. First win. Game two. And then Corey Casto, a native of Oregon, right down the road. Hit a three run homer in the eighth inning off the right field pole to give the Nats a six to two win and a sweep of the M's back in 08. Breaking ball was hanging a bit for Desmond. And right to the bag goes Kyle Seeger. Nats had the first two on. They've only stranded three and they've hit Felix Hart through five.
third base, I believe, here at Safeco Field. Five to two now as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning. But Potomac Nationals are in the Carolina League playoffs again, capturing the Northern Division's best record. The Peanuts have earned home field advantage throughout the first round of the playoffs. That's September 3rd through the 5th, so go out to the 5th and check out some playoff ball. Well, they've been there before under Randy Norr. Here in Seattle, bottom of the fifth inning, Austin Jackson struck out twice by Jordan Zimmerman, who just misses away. He has retired 11 of the last 13. And a drive to center, Denard Span back, stops, grabs it, one out. Let's check in with Mass and Dan. We've been talking about injuries all year. Dan, is there some good news out there? There's good news on the field tonight, Bob, and there's good news off the field for the Nationals. Ryan Zimmerman continues to progress in his rehab from a right hamstring strain. He got another MRI on that hamstring on Monday. Matt Williams said today that it's very positive, the results that the Nationals got. They said the hamstring is healing up really well. He can start increasing his strengthening workouts at this point. He's jogging. He's continuing to throw. No hitting just yet. The Nationals want to get him running at full speed. He can run around the bases, and then he'll start mixing in some hitting. But the good news is Zimmerman's making the progress that the Nationals want him to make. Well, that is fantastic news for Ryan, for the ball club, for September. It's great news. You know, I want to say that Mass and Dan had a little something to do with the lack of strikeouts tonight by taking the, his, <laughs> his mojo, the, the Nats mojo, some natitude into the K court and doing that report. He was he, an infiltrator. He was fearless. He just walked in the middle of all those yellow shirts, did a report. I think that might have been his sister dancing behind him, but you got to give him some credit. I was going to say, nobody has danced out there since that lady got behind our Dan until... Felix Hernandez struck out LaRoche, second out of the fifth inning. 2 2 now to Dustin Ackley, who's tripled and fouled out. Zimmerman can't reach it. Cabrera can, and a base hit. Dustin Ackley, two for three, and that's big for Seattle with Robinson Cano coming up. And we told you about since the All-Star break that Ackley's been hot, 313 average, so add a couple of more hits to it tonight. A triple in the first, now an infield single. And you can't do more than as Drupal Cabrera did right there. Robinson Cano would have been proud of that play. He almost got him, but Ackley just too fast. The transfer, the jump, got rid of it quick. Beautiful. It must seem like so close for him. He used to do that play from shortstop for so many years. And Ackley just too fast. Robinson Cano a walk and a base hit tonight. He's now hitting over 345 against right handed pitching. And if he gets another hit tonight. Unless Span does he'll tie Denard with 50 multi hit games. It's outside for ball one. Two and zero. Oh. Middle of the Mariners lineup really not what they envisioned at the start of the season. Corey Hart's back on the DL with knee problems. Several times in his career, they were counting on him to DH and hit a lot of home runs this year. So Kendry's Morales is the number four hitter behind Cano. Boy, this guy gets ahead. Look out! He fouls that one right off the top of Wilson Ramos' helmet. Wilson <laughs> takes a look at it to see if there might be a scrape or two on top of it. Catchers will take that. That was a glancing blow. It's count up there though because of that 33 pitch first inning. Had him reaching, and he goes the other way again. That is some kind of hitting by Robinson Cano. So that's his 50th multi-hit game of the year. 
Sweet swing. 160 hits. He just takes what the game gives him. We talked about it before his first at bat. He, he, he doesn't go pull mode unless you hang something. He'll cheat every once in a while and gets in ahead and count and try to pull something out of here. But you pitch him away, he hits it away. Very simple stroke. Beautiful stroke. He 5.5 hole for two knocks tonight for Robinson Cano. He will surpass 2,000 hits next year. And if he he will do it if he stays healthy. So that would be next year if you project forward. Sometime in his 11th year in the big leagues, he'll already be at 2,000 hits. Here's Kendry's Morales, and he's had a good night with a drive off the glove of LaRoche and a clean single to right, two for two with an RBI. Another jam for Jordan here. And it's a strike similar to the one he was in two innings ago. Let's see if they take advantage of that outside strike that Doug Eddings has been calling all night. Yeah, what do I mean by that? You just keep setting up out there, keep creeping further out, see how far he'll go with you if you can execute it and hit the spot. Make life, life tough on the Mariners hitters. And a pop up straight back out of play. Five two nets, bottom of the fifth. Right now, a very key point in the ball game for Jordan Zimmerman. Long look at the second base runner. And a pop fly left side. It'll be easy for Rendon. Big out against the cleanup guy, two down. So two more in Seattle after tonight. And then it's on to LA. Strasburg, Chris Young tomorrow, Tanner Roark. Hisashi Iwakuma on Sunday, and then sometime during that series, the Nats will see Clayton Kershaw. Day game Wednesday. So a lot of work left to do on this road trip, with, which is 0 3 right now. All that matters is this matchup, this inning right here. Seeger, one for two, with a base hit. It could have been ruled an error. And an RBI back in the first inning off the glove of actually in Anthony Rendon's glove and then the throw to second. See, that's what I'm talking about. Giving him that wow. couple of inches outside and he's taking advantage of it. And Seeger's been frustrated all night with that call. Wide body Nissan pitch track. Trying to stay out there and he missed with 95. Tried to expand just a hair more, a little too much run on that. Got him on a pop-up. Rendon Desmond out there coming in Harper. Ian makes the call. He has it. And Jordan Zimmerman frustrates the Mariners again. Stranding six runners through five with a three-run lead.
head shaking night. And by the way, that's the Seahawks Stadium just to the north of us where the Seattle Sounders also play soccer. Great complex here. Get back to our Honda do up here in the top of the sixth inning. Harper Ramos Cabrera. There they are on the road since the All Star break. Rice tonight, one for two, the base it up the middle, the ground ball to second. And a breaking ball. Swing the foul tip. Went to CenturyLink Field next door for the NFC Championship game. You did. It's the they, loudest yeah. place I've ever been in my life for any sport event. I don't know, maybe the One Direction concert at Hats Park was loud. But it was pretty loud that day. Yeah, your Niners didn't do. A... It was the Super Bowl. Oh yeah, I told everybody I went to the Super Bowl. Yeah, I was thinking. Same conference. Wow, what a great place. Yeah. NFC Championship game and the Super Bowl was an afterthought. Two-two. Harper able to stay alive with a foul tip. Nats box score. Rendon solo homer first inning. He walked in the third. Worth left the yard. Desmond led off the fourth with a homer. One out later, Wilson Ramos added one. Two singles since then. Span and Rendon. 2 2 to Harper. And Bryce will take it up and away. I'm a little surprised that Felix Hernandez on a night when the strike zone is wide to lefties hasn't tried to take advantage of that more. And Harper goes down, flexes his knees, and makes contact to stay in there. I'm going to tell you something about how he feels about his command. Maybe he's tried to. But usually the elite ones will, if you give him a couple inches, they'll take it and they'll wear it out. You're even watching Bryce Harper tonight take something out of his swing with two strikes. And if you remember in 2012, spread out, he get his foot down early and just slap balls to left field. Kind of in that mode right here. Three two leading off the sixth. Harper up the middle again. And Bryce is two for three. Mm. How many two strike hits tonight? With the approach, Carp. This is what we're talking about. Spread out, bat on his shoulder, not real big. Look at that foot down, just slapping it. The adjustments with two strikes tonight have been something I haven't seen all year on a consistent basis from Nat Sitters all the way through the order. Almost I know like the players are doing it. You got to give Rick Shue a lot of credit. He had his guys ready to face Felix Hernandez tonight. Yes, he did. And the approach is get him early, but if you get to two strikes, spread out and do whatever you can to sit everybody down in the left field corner. Ramos jammed and Morrison over to grab it for the first down. Wilson had attacked early in the count twice tonight, lining out to third and then homering in the fourth. Next up, Cabrera. You know, but a lot of people like to take shots at hitting coaches when things aren't going well on a night like this against an elite starter. All the credit in the world goes for that guy. These guys were ready tonight. Nobody works harder. I mean, he gets here at noon. He's always got his iPad in his hand with the opposing pitcher's video on it, walking around, trying to get anything he can, any edge he can on the the night's opponent, showing guys this is what we need to do. This is what he did last start. You know, he's really elevated. Get him up tonight and get him early. You know, whoever it is. And all hitting coaches work hard. I don't want to. You know, separate Rick Shue from other major league hitting coaches, but I'll, I'll say this: nobody works harder. Cabrera, six-four-three double play ball, a foul out to third. So Felix Hernandez has had him going the other way twice. And that's right at the shortstop, and maybe another six-four-three. Cano just went running right over the bag, knowing he had time. Mariners turn their second of the night. It remains 5 2 Nets.
Geico highlights. Check out the night of Jordan Zimmerman so far. You know, since the first inning, the fastball's been alive. And climbing the ladder with it, striking guys out. And then he got the slider and really got into an even flow. You see the one right there for strike three. And pounding the fastball in, but so far he's been the man of the hour. 96 pitches through five. Seven strikeouts. And he had those by the first out of the fourth inning. Zanino the catcher, Morrison the first baseman, Taylor the shortstop here in the sixth. Midnight in D.C. City of Washington doing a little better in this game than the state of Washington. It's 5 2 Nats. Bob F.P. Dan from beautiful just south of downtown Seattle. Zanino the catcher, a liner to center, and a swinging strikeout. Hernandez, by the way, at 90 pitches through his six innings. Swing and a miss on a nasty slide. Working Zanino away just like he did last time. Strikeout number eight. Yeah, I don't know what Jordan's going to say after the game, but he didn't have his slider the first two innings. He could have been a little bit too pumped up. You know, Friday night facing the Mariners in their ballpark, everybody going nuts. But since he's established that slider down away to right handers, down and into lefties, he's been lights out. Yeah, look at the pitch total since that long first inning. Very efficient. Logan Morrison has struck out twice. It gives him first pitch slider. Got him high in the zone a couple of times, swinging tonight. Two and zero. Oh. Tried to go the well right there on the fastball away. Didn't get the call. You can always go out there. <laughs> what are you going to do with that at 94? There if you're you a hitter, what do you do? He's been consistent. He's been calling it all night. <laughs> Same pitch rack we've been showing all year. And now Morrison getting time again. This is the second time he's gotten time while Jordan was getting ready to push off the mound. 2 1 pitch. Popped him up. Anthony Rendon coaches box two outs oh my gosh there's a Labor Day sale you could save 50 percent and get MLB.com at that premium for only 499 can I put that in layaway it's a Labor Day sale <laughs> follow every Nationals game with live look-ins replays live radio broadcasts the MLB.tv game of the day and more there's a Labor Day sale. Love it. Is that one like where you stand outside the MLB.com store and you four in the morning? Stand by your phone at four in the morning yeah. and get in line. Yeah. Ian Desmond's under this one. Chris Taylor gone, and Jordan Zimmerman so far is the ruling royal of this one. We're through six in Seattle. Five two Nationals.
Well, son, why do you think that is? Well, it's because Jordan has established his off speed like that slider right there. Now as a hitter, you watch the late swing right here from Logan Morrison. Is it going to be a slider? No, it's a fastball, so he's late. Since the second inning, he's thrown the slider. Another late swing right here. And now just having that off speed in the back of these hitters' heads is not allowing them to get the barrel out front and drive the fastball like they did early. When a guy's not throwing a slider for a strike, his curveball first strike, you see that rotation as a hitter early, you just take it. You know, Jordan's at 105 pitches, but he only threw nine that inning. So after a long first inning, he might make it through seven or so tonight. Here we go on the top of the seven. Nate Sheerholtz against Felix Hernandez. He's hit a fly ball to center and grounded out to second base. And Sheerholtz out to left center. That'll chase Austin Jackson to the gap. Now we got a mass and word of the day for you. Is it a word or two words? I mean, what, it says word. I would say a mass and word ish of the day. Text Jiffy Lube to 29292 for your chance to win a meet and greet with Gio Gonzalez. Stay tuned all week for more chances to win. Brought to you by yeah, Jiffy Lube. I want to go to dictionary.com and check that one huh, out. Go figure. Top of the order, Denard Span, base hit last time. Your Labor Day sale at Jiffy Lube? Maybe. Sort of. High strike. Drew Storn. <laughs> and the 0 1 to spin. He'll look at that low and away. Another thing that's in the favor of the Nationals tonight the Mariners are not a juggernaut offensive team. They don't come from behind with great offense to win a lot. 11th in runs, 13th in batting average. So we'll see if Zimmerman gets sent out there for one more inning. And a nasty pitch low and inside. Interesting thing, this was a game not involving the DH. Felix would already probably be out of this game for a pinch hitter. Zimmerman maybe as well. A little easier for managers in that aspect, but sometimes it's hard to figure out exactly when to pull a guy out of the game when you don't have to pinch it for him. And how often our hops back ball too? How often, Carp, do you hear like the, the streak of seven innings or more in the National League because of the point you're making? Yeah. It allows you know to him because he's a horse to have that I pitched seven innings or more in 15 or 16 straight starts because. A header behind you're in the game in the American League. You don't have to pinch hit. Yeah, Ma National League can pitch a great game. If you're down two to one, they have to hit for it. Up the middle, Robinson Cano. Two quick outs for Felix Hernandez in the seventh. He hasn't retired Anthony Rondon yet. He'll try to do that here. I mean, is there anybody more casual and smooth than Robinson Cano on a routine ground ball? I mean, it's My just like exactly. It's like he's just, I don't even know, taking a walk in the park on a Sunday afternoon backhand. I think I'll backhand it. I got this right on the money with something on it. I had to spend spring training with him and with the Yankees one year and just watch him take ground balls on a daily basis. I don't know if I've ever seen anybody smoother. He is signed here through the year 2023. He might have 4,000 hits by then if he keeps himself healthy enough to play every day. I mean, he is really building an amazing career. One ball, one strike to Rendon, who's homered, walked, singled, scored twice, and he's three runs away from 100. Now Felix Hernandez at 100 pitches. Zimmerman 105. Three and one.
Rendon, another good swing, slams it off the left center. That ball is going to one hop the wall at about 390 feet away. And Anthony Rendon's having a remarkable evening in Seattle. He's a triple shy of the cycle off Felix Hernandez. How many guys can say that? Home run first time up, walked his second plate appearance. Third time up in the fifth single, and now a two out double, a ringing double in the left center field gap. How about that sound? It's a good sound. I mean, they even heard that up in right center field where that really interesting camera shot comes from. One of the most unique views of the diamond we've had all year. Worth's going to pull the ball to the left side, and the shortstop, Chris Taylor, throws him out. Seventh inning stretch in Seattle, brought to you by Hyundai. They've got a Labor Day sale coming up as well. It's all Nats in Seattle tonight, but a long way to go. Nine big outs to get in a 5-2 game. Copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Washington Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Washington Nationals. And a five to two Nats as we head to the bottom of the seventh. Drew Storn on. Jordan Zimmerman's night over, but he struck out eight Mariners for a total of $296. DC area Toyota dealers helping children and their families by making that donation. That's to the children's in at NIH for every strikeout by a Nats pitcher this season. And two seam fastball mid 90s slider and the changeup. Three pitches the Mariners will see from Juice Dorn right now. Indy Chavez leads off. Facing Storm for the first time. On the inside corner. So Jordan Zimmerman, six innings, seven hits, two runs, walked one, struck out eight, 105 pitches, 73 strikes. And the only thing that got him was the pitch count because of that first inning. Well, tonight against Felix Hernandez, he was definitely the better man. Andy Chavez, a strikeout in the fly ball. Jordan Zimmerman, facing an American League team, did not give a hit up to anybody beyond the number five spot in the lineup tonight. Off speed. That was nasty. Ninth strikeout by the national staff tonight. Nissan will track it. Yeah, nasty changeup, like you said, a three pitch gets your glove and you know, getting right in the strike zone as he usually does. Mariners box score two runs on three hits in the first. RBIs by Morales and Seeger. 
And since then, Jordan Zimmerman gave up four singles and stranded all four men. And Drew Storen comes out pumping strikes here in the seventh. Austin Jackson facing him for the first time. Two strikeouts before that line out to center in the fifth. Breaking ball out of play right side. You know, in interleague play, when, when you play a team just three times, I think you're at a disadvantage of the hitter facing relievers. Because you can sit mm. in the clubhouse and watch all the video you want on the starter for the night, but very rarely you're going to sit there and go, okay, I'm going to check out Drew Storm right now. If you're in the Mariners clubhouse, yeah, they'll, they'll tell you what he's got. There'll be a piece of paper. And, and your major league hitter, you go up there and figure it out on the fly. But when you, you know, face a guy for three pitches, you're at a distinct disadvantage. That's a strikeout. Jackson couldn't hold, and he's down on strikes for the third time tonight. That was nasty front door action by Drew Storm. Yeah, he swallowed him whole here on another three pitch. See, that's a changeup. Mm. So a two. Th Three pitch gets your gloves back to back strikeouts for Drew Storm. Went pretty far. Here's Ackley. Ackley, Cano, and Morales, the two, three, four hitters, all have two hits tonight. But Jordan able to minimize the damage. Turning one over and missing away. One ball, one strike. Matt Thornton. Talk about a couple of American leaguers and Nats have picked up in Cabrera and Thornton to help out this ball club. It's been great. Had him reaching. Sounded like a busted bat. Desmond on the charge. What a gun on the run. And a 1 2 3 beauty by Drew Storen in the bottom of the seventh. 4 5 6 ahead for the Nats who lead 5 2. At bat, I think it's the best at bat of the year. We're going to take a look at all 10 pitches, and his two strike approach is what I really want you to focus on. Okay, there's one foul ball. He takes a split in the dirt, change up. And another foul ball, and a nasty slider. Another nasty change up. Look at that one. That's the best one. And then he gets this pitch on the 10th pitch, drives it into the stands for his 22nd home run of the year, and maybe the best at bat of the year and the best at bat of Ian Desmond's career. There it is, 10th pitch right in the power zone. I asked the truck to go back and get that. Nice job, guys. Thanks. I wanted to see that again, and I know Nats fans did too. That was amazing. Great stuff. Joe Bimel was with the Nats in 09, pitched in 45 games with a 3.40 ERA out of the bullpen. And still. 
Moving the ball around, fooling people at the age of 37. Joe Bible. Adam LaRoche is three for 12 career against him. And he leads off the eighth. Fastball, curveball change. Fastball 86. And that's the curve. Felix Hernandez went seven. The Nats got him for four runs on 10 hits, four home runs. He walked one. He struck out one batter while throwing 103 pitches. Amazing job of contact by the Nats tonight. And in several cases, very long, loud contact. Ian Desmond, a good night, two for three. And the 0-2 to Lou Roche. We'll chop it. And that's the third baseman, Kyle Seeger, who plays up the middle there. All right, we promised you earlier in the game we have an AT&T fan photo, and there they are, nice Nats family. I think that the father's name is Jeremy, and that's his daughter right there on the end. All right. Well done, nice. guys. Nice. Ian Desmond, 0 for 2 career against the left-hander Bimel. Hunt! 86 in there. So Desmond, 9 for his last 20. With two home runs. Four batted in over the last five games with the stick. Trying to hop all over that one. Now well, the Nats have their bullpen set up. Drew Storen has done his seventh inning job. Now Felix Hernandez gave up 10 hits today. I'm looking. He's only given up more hits one time this year. It was on May 7th at Oakland where he gave up 11 and six and a third to the Athletics. The most he'd given up besides that is eight hits. Twice. Bimel turns one over Desmond not biting. There's Tyler Clippard for the eighth inning. First batter he'll face Robinson Cano. And a 2 2 now. Desmond just reaching out to stay alive. Nobody will catch it. And it'll fall short, hopping the barrier down there. That's the exact swing. It was a low line drive that we just showed that went foul. That reach him out, one hand thing to keep it alive that got him to a pitch that he drove out of this park. He and Trent Jewett were so close when Trent was with the Nationals. I, I know that Ian Desmond is, you know, you, you have an old coach that's on the other side. You want to show him, you know, how you've improved, how you've de developed when you have that kind of relationship. I think a lot of that goes into play tonight based on what we've seen. This guy's putting together some kind of season. 22 home runs. Yeah, those two are close. Still are. Eighty one runs batted in for Ian. They would just sit and talk baseball in the clubhouse, sit and talk baseball on the bench. During batting practice, Ian always picking Trent Jewett's mind about little things in the game, trying to become a better player. And Desmond has the ball get by him. So Joe Bimel has as many strikeouts tonight as Felix Hernandez. Everybody else has played in the East tonight. So if the Nats hold on to win here, it'll go back to six on Atlanta, 11 on Miami. As I mentioned earlier, the Mets beat the Phillies tonight, ending Philadelphia's four game win streak. Two, one, 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 
So here's Bryce Harper, two for three tonight with a pair of base hits up the middle. And Bryce gets a big piece of that one out to deep center. Austin Jackson going back, and the Nats have homered for the fifth time tonight. Bryce Harper's eighth of the year, and it's a 6 2 game. They're making this park look small, and trust me, it isn't. Eighth home run of the season for Bryce Harper, and it comes off a lefty. Joe Bimel, and as soon as he hit it, you knew it was gone. When he hits them, they stay hit. Nice effort by Austin Jackson, but just too far. Bimel can't believe it. And the fifth home run of the night for the Nats. It's only the third home run Joe Bimel's given up this year. Here's Wilson Ramos. It's a new season high for the Nationals. And the last time they hit five homers in a game was September 9th of last year at City Field. The Nats went five homers in a game three times last year. Get back, gets back to my rant earlier in the game when I said. It's not a measuring stick for who they're playing. They weren't saying this is a measuring stick trip. No, it's a measuring stick for the teams that are playing the Nats on this trip. And that's the way you have to think. Looks that way tonight. 1 1 to Ramos. Joe Bimel turned one over. Wilson, one career AB against Joe, and it was a base on balls. And Bryce Harper continues to produce against left handed pitchers this year. That ball bounces way out in front of home plate. Yeah, he's saying, yeah, I got that one. Ali Madami, that's batting practice pitcher, John Fieldman, strength and conditioning coach. Three and two now to Ramos, so look out here. If there's anything near the strike zone from a soft tossing lefty. How many guys in D.C. on a Friday night late just said I want to be the Nats batting practice pitcher. How do you get that job? Yeah. I pitched in high school. Come on. Hang out with Bryce after he hits homers. Ramos pretty well hit right center. Austin Jackson and it's another for the Nats. Wilson Ramos opposite field. Seven to two. Who kidnapped Safeco Field and replaced it with a bandbox? This is impressive. Second home run of the night for Wilson Ramos. Six home run of the night for the Nationals. And there's some shooting percentages in the Nats dugout going down tonight. Drew Storm getting in on the action. He shot a jumper right there, and I don't know if it made it or not, but who cares? Seven to two on 12 hits with two outs in the top of the eighth inning. There's a fireworks show after the game tonight here at Safeco Field, and you know where I'm going with that. It's That'll corny. make two of them on the night, right? It's corny, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> well, the Nats have sent a couple of Roman candles out of here, and I will go ahead and do it myself. It's called to the bullpen package by the UPS store. Your one stop shop for all your small business needs. Let us handle your mailbox service needs. We love logistics. Everybody getting in on the power act tonight.
And the right hander Brandon Maurer in to face as Drupal Cabrera. Maurer, 24 year old right hander. He was a 23rd rounder back in 08. Eight 14 starts for the Mariners last year. They like him in the bullpen now. Cabrera's faced him before. And with that ground ball, as Drubal will be 0 for 5 career against Brandon Maurer. We're going to the bottom of the eighth inning in a ballpark that, quite frankly, has to be shocked at what 35,616 have witnessed tonight. So Harper goes deep in the eighth for the fifth Nats homer of the night. And then back to back, Wilson Ramos going out there where the left handers hit him. Unbelievable display tonight. Brought to you by Honda. Nets haven't quite hit one to the Space Needle tonight, but they've put some balls out of this ballpark in places where only the big guys hit them. So Harper and Ramos in the eighth. And Tyler Clippard, who was up to protect a three run lead, now has a five run cushion. A fastball, curveball, change up split from Tyler Clippard, and his numbers on the year are absolutely. Fantastic. A 188 ERA, 70 strikeouts of 20 walks, and a 195 average against lefties have been hitting him a little bit better lately. Here's Robinson Cano against Tyler Clipper. First pitch changeup, and even the great Cano was spinning around on that one. Carp, I sent out a tweet this afternoon. I said, either take a nap or set your DVR. Tonight's game has a chance to be one of those truly special contests. I had no idea it was going to be six home runs by the Nats. I was thinking more of a one to nothing pitcher's duel, but it turned out to be one of those special contests from an offensive standpoint so far. Unbelievable. Clippert at Cano reaching, and Cabrera's under it. One out, eighth inning. You have until September 5th to purchase your 2014 postseason tickets. Now, this is if you are a season plan holder. I've already renewed mine. Can't wait for October. You'll also have the chance to upgrade your season plan for next year to receive upgraded postseason seats for all renewal and postseason ticket details. Visit nationals.com slash renew. First pitch strike to Kendry's Morales. Like Cano facing Tyler Clippard for the first time. We didn't even have time to say that Cano and Clippard were once in the same organization together with the Yankees. Morales two for three with an RBI single back in the first. That is nasty at 75.
That's a curveball at 75. Yeah. That's the one he says he grips deep in his hand. He throws it as hard as he can. That's why sometimes it squirts out halfway up the screen. Oh, two. Change up a beauty. Diving away from the left handed batter. Morales wants to know if it was a strike. And I'm not sure it would have been a called strike. But Ramos held on two down. Well, it started out a strike, that's for sure, but watch the run on it late off the plate. Nowhere near a strike once Wilson finally catches it. And you get the feeling when a hitter turns around and talks to an umpire like that. He might have just seen a pitch he's never seen before or move in terms of a really good change. Yeah, with well, the way it moved. Absolutely. Here's Kyle Seeger. Oh! Clifford goes 79 on him. Bryson Wilson, it's the first time the Nats have gone back to back all year. Really? Yep. Wow. I'm saying something for a team that has now hit 122 home runs. Six tonight. They've never hit seven in a game. Well, there's an inning to go. Yeah, why not? Sure holds Span Rendon, by the way, in the ninth. Do you remember that series against the Cubs in 2012 when they hit all the taters? Oh, yeah. That's the last time they've hit six. Maybe. I mean, this was 427 the other day in Philadelphia. Tyler Clipper goes fastball. Overpowers Seeger. Anthony Rendon or Ramos, and Wilson will take the fair ball. Bullpen brilliant and perfect through two innings after a great six by Jordan Zimmerman. All Nets tonight. Sweet sound, isn't it? I thought it was pretty funny right after those sweet sounds to hear the oohs and the o's from the crowd. Every single one. <laughs> Tugout's having fun. So this is kind of crazy. The Nats are about to beat Seattle for the tenth consecutive time in interleague play. And the most recent, of course, the Kind of eventful three game series in DC three years ago when Jim Riggleman, moments after that sweep, resigned as Nationals manager. The three games we talked about back in 08 here. 
And here's Fernando Rodney, their closer, who has 38 saves this year in 41 attempts. An 11 game winning streak will make you shut it down. Won't it? Fastball 95, changeup 83, two pitches, one of the better changeups in baseball, if not the best. Yeah, last year 37 saves with Tampa Bay, 48 with the Rays the year before that. So he's going to go 40 plus again here. He'll face Nate Sherholtz, Denard Span, and Anthony Rendon. Sherholtz will face Rodney for the first time. Hit the ball hard twice tonight. Deep flyouts to center. Hard hit right at Logan Morrison. Three out of four. Pretty good swings by Nate Sherholtz tonight. Yeah, a couple off the bench. An arch span against Rodney. Two for nine career. Denard one for four tonight. Then there's something interesting waiting in the on deck circle here. Oh yeah. With the moose. The mascot. That pitch almost. Or is it a triple for a cycle. There's triples in this ballpark too. Oh yeah. Everywhere. Even the left center. Two and oh. More right center than anything, but you, you can actually get a pull side triple because the gaps are so big here. Rodney might not be the only closer getting work tonight. And Denard Span will turn that into a two for five. So as Robinson Cano gets his 50th multi hit game of the year, Denard's going to get his 51st. Another loud sound, short, compact swing from Denard right there. Got ahead in the count, got a fastball, and the 13th hit of the night for the Nats. Bullet to right, fastball down the middle, and a one for four into a two for five is what we used to call a super salvage. So that's a Friday 13th hit. And here comes Rendon. Homer walks single double. Facing Rodney for the first time and. No pitch because something's on the field down the left field line. Paper airplane a big one. Well what else do you do with a K when your guy only fanned one beat one hitter. <laughs> well that or it came from the Boeing plant right down the street. Maybe they just. Tested, Boeing field. Yeah. Te yeah testing a new plane I think. Boeing field just to the south of us. First pitch, ball one. Rafael Soriano against Zanino, Morrison, and Taylor, bottom of the ninth. The, the key to a triple here is Denard on first. He, if it happens, he's got to read it quick. He could clog up the bases if he sits there and waits for it to get in a gap. And, you know, if he does do it, Denard will play a role. Yeah, it's a good call. I hadn't thought of that aspect of it. Runner ahead of you. With only one out, because you're not running on anything like you do with two down. Up and in. Can't swing three and zero oh up by five. Oh, maybe you can. I don't think they'll give him a green line up. up by five. That's a strike. Oh. Rendon swings through it. It's 
Span holding. And Rendon will try to drop one down the left field line. That ball is in front of Dustin Ackley, and Anthony Rendon will have to settle for a four hit night on base five times. I'm thinking of ways when it was in the air that it could be a triple. Well, maybe it has some English on it. It really kicks to the wall. Maybe he overruns it. <laughs> that's a little league triple right there, but not at this oh, level. That's I guess, just huh? begging is all that is. He'll take it. It's a thing, as in a beautiful thing. Just reaches out, taps it. You know, three-two changeup from Fernando Rodney drops it in there. And can you say it's raining hits in Seattle because mm -hmm. it is? Fourteenth hit of the night. Jason Worth facing Rodney for the first time. And as the DH tonight, a big blow back in the third. His two run homer put the Nationals on top. An inning and a half after Seattle had taken the lead. Inside ball one. Two on, one out. Jason Worth DH tonight to take some weight off his knees standing out in right field. Doesn't have to throw with that arm that's been barking. Yeah. May DH the whole series. Closers are just different when it's not a save opportunity. Huh? They come out to work on things. They don't have that same adrenaline rush. Yeah. Turn into different pitchers. By the way, we need to mention that the Mariners have made a change. Rowenis Elias will be their starter tomorrow night, not Chris Young. Made that change right before game time tonight. Well, if he sets any records tomorrow night, we won't have to call Elias. Elias. Maybe he's trying to beg off right now after what he's seen. No, he's sitting there going, get them all out of your system tonight, boys. Their starter is 9 and 11 with a 4 ERA. And that's strike two to Jason Worth. Count goes full with one out. We might get one this weekend, Carp. Thinking the same thing. We have a very low vantage point. We're just offset to the right for right handed batters to slice one up here. There we are. We are. Well, it's been a while. We're due. Yeah. We're we're in a we're in a spot where we could grab one. Up and in the bases are loaded. You know, this might give you a sneak peek at Fernando Rodney for later in the series, but I don't think he'll be the same guy you're seeing here tonight. It just looks like he's throwing a pen to me. And, you know, the closers are adrenaline junkies. He's used to pitching at home with 40,000 people on their feet going nuts, and right now he's just getting his work in, which he has to. I mean, it's the right move by Trent Jewett. It's just not the same deal. You get a release point maybe. And, if you have to face him on, you know, Saturday or Sunday in a save situation, you might get an idea of his stuff. But, you know, in interleague play, when I you know, just made the point about how relievers are sometimes tough, yeah. you don't really study them as much. Yeah, you get a sneak peek. Adam LaRoche against Rodney. One for two career with a double. Would that be something if number seven tonight was a slam? And that's on, on top seven to two here in the ninth. Off speed. Counts even one one. Still count, even if it is a save opportunity. I'm sure 
That's what Mike Zanino is thinking right now. Let's go, Quan. And LaRoche. Big sound on that one, the left center. Jackson going back at the track. Spann will tag and score. Rendon will tag and go to third. It's eight to two Nats. And Adam LaRoche didn't miss by much. Well, he just got inside of it enough to get that side spin on it, not the true 12 6 backspin. And he had that cut rotation on it, and it kept it in the ballpark. He went down and got it, had the good sound, and you see it kind of tailing away from Austin Jackson. So he kind of got too much of the inside of the baseball. That would have been home run number seven, but a good at bat nonetheless. Here's Ian Desmond, who's two for four with a home run. Desmond seeing Rodney for the first time. So yeah, Nate Sherholz could have a pinch in off the bench off Rodney. Now we've seen him. Span, Rendo, and Worth, LaRoche, Desmond have seen him. So very worthwhile ninth. But I guarantee his stuff is a lot more sharp and a save opportunity. He's got that little Rob Nen toe tap going. It's, I, mean, I watched him on TV a lot. I didn't really notice that. Way inside to Ian Desmond, three and one. Not sure they were thinking about 25 pitches with one out. And Desmond is short. Maybe that's what they need. A little shovel over to second base. And that's it for the Nationals in the top of the ninth inning. Another run on two hits. Eight to two on 14. with a half dozen home runs tonight and uh, are you about ready to look at these again well I want to make a point that in today's game when there's bat flips and people showing everybody up everybody ran to first base tonight everybody handled it professionally nobody showed anybody up and, and that's very rare in today's game especially in a game with six homers Wilson took a half a second there but that's nothing to get drilled about but in, in, in a game where it's about look at me and flipping bats and standing at home plate yeah. And walking out of the batter's box, six home runs hit tonight by the Nats, and they did it professionally. Great call.
Yeah, fastball low 90s. He'll cut the fastball. The breaking ball is a slider. And I don't know about the changeup. I haven't seen one yet this year. But hey, 1%. You can snuck a few past me. Rafael Soriano started his big league career with the Mariners in 02. He was here off and on through the 06 season. Only had three career saves during that time. Not really a closer yet at that point. Still kind of feeling his way as a young big leaguer. Mike Zanino, the catcher. Logan Morrison and then Chris Taylor. Bottom of the ninth. Got the call. Outside corner. One and two. The Mariners have four hits since the first inning. None against the Nationals bullpen. How about Storen? Seventh inning. One, two, three. Nine pitches, eight strikes. Clippert, eighth inning. One, two, three. Ten pitches, eight strikes. That's how you stay available for a couple of days. Good call. On a pitch away, had him reaching. Adam LaRoche. Soriano was there to cover if needed. Adam does it himself for the first out, ninth inning. Next up will be Logan Morrison. Who's 0 for 2 career with a walk against Soriano? Jordan Zimmerman set him down three times in a row tonight. So when the Nats wrap this one up. They will stay six up on Atlanta and 11 on the Marlins in the East. Swing and a miss on 90 upstairs. One ball, one strike. I'll tell you one thing if you're watching swings tonight, you have to climb the ladder on Logan Morrison. And they've elevated some fastballs against him, and he likes the ball up in his eyes. He'll yeah, probably see a few more of those tomorrow. And a 1 1 pitch. Close. That might have been Charlie Slows and Dave Jagler. That's ball just missing inside. My radio voice. How did you like it? That was that was good. That Charlie pitch. Slows and Dave Jagler. Good pitch. Just missed. And Soriano pumping strikes tonight. It's only 10 o'clock for us out here. Thanks for being up so late. On a Saturday morning for Nats fans. What a good night it's been in Seattle. The Nationals have scored in four different innings tonight. They've hit six home runs. And they've given Felix Hernandez the beating of his career. And now Soriano rings up Logan Morrison, two outs. Yeah, that strike's been there all night from Doug Eddings, and it's not going anywhere. Third strike out of the night for Logan Morrison. Chris Taylor, the shortstop. Out of UVA, final hope for the Mariners in a 7 2 game.
That's a good looking slider. One more strike. Hour earlier tomorrow night, six o'clock local out here, nine o'clock Eastern. Steven Strasburg will be going for number 11. And a base hit up the middle for Chris Taylor. The Mariners' first hit since the fifth inning. Andy Chavez, the number nine man in the Seattle lineup, and he's 0 for 2 career against Soriano. Out to left center. That ball's going to drop. Heading for third, Taylor. He will be sent by John Stearns over third and. The Mariners are on the board for the first time in three hours. Well, just split the gap perfect. Taylor away from Denard Span, nothing he could do. Bryce Harper playing Chavez way on the line. And a two out double plates the third run of the night for the M's. Top of the order now, Austin Jackson. Jackson against Soriano career one for four with a double. And another base hit. Leno will have to hold it third. It was hit right at Bryce Harper. One of the folks staying around for the fireworks making some noise. What a very frustrating night when their team has been dominated. Dustin Ackley will be next. Even though you can't create a safe opportunity for yourself, you don't want to create a safe opportunity at all. And Matt Williams wants to get the heck out of Dodge with an 8 to 3 win. Rafael Soriano struggling to get that third out. Yeah, got the first two quickly. Ackley two for four tonight. First time these two have matched up. Good pitch, good sink on it. You don't see that very often from Soriano. Turn that one over, nice. Watch this ball move away from Ackley. Good pitch. That's been there all night. He offered and took a 92 upstairs. Runner going at first, and a ball hit out to center. Denard Span, game over. Two hours and 55 minutes of the Nationals blasting away early in the ball.